Ready? Well, I'm Vladimir Prabhasudov. I'm a professor of biology at the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, my name is Ben Sonnenberg. I'm one of Vladimir's graduate students uh, in UNR's Ecology, Evolution, and Conservation Biology program. And overall, we're interested how animals are able to find their way around. So we all need to navigate places. Uh, for example, Ben, where is the nest, uh, nest box uh, close to here? 28-2 uh, is just right over the hill. Yeah, it would be. And then there's a 29, and we can remember where exactly they are. If you were turning around the corner, and then there's a weather station. The bottom line is we used to find some uh, landmarks that we tried to find it. Well, here we study mountain chickadees. It's the birds that can cache tens of thousands of individual seeds items and then remember all of their location, which is by far more impressive than any human can do. Uh, and the goal of our work is to find out how important their memory is because they use special memory to find all of these individual locations. Uh, and they need to find this food because unlike us, if I don't find my nest box, I'll probably still have a nice lunch. But if a chickadee doesn't find his caches, it's most likely going to die. Well, we're going to show you here our field site and how we study mountain chickadees and how they find their caches. He's, oh, look at, he's looking for caches. Oh, yeah, that's good. So I'm at one of our many feeder locations around our field site at Seichen Research Forest. Uh, so these are high-tech uh, RFID, so radio frequency identification equipped feeders. So each one of these feeders is equipped with a battery and a small computer board that opens and closes a mechanism that allows access to the seeds inside one of these feeders. And so this specific system and its array of eight feeders that all hang together in the woods allows us to do memory and learning experiments on wild mountain chickadees in the Sierra Nevada. The first step to our research is to band as many birds as we can throughout our field site. And so we set up nets around our feeders, which remain open. Here, you go down this way. Yeah, I'm going that way. When the birds are coming to visit the feeder and they're flying in, they'll fly in and fall into the pocket. And so between these two tram lines, there's a lot of netting. And then we can just reach down in and untangle them and extract them, and that's how we catch them. We set these nets and that allows us to catch these birds and then put the, a passive integrative transponder or a pit tag on their leg. So we take the and just it. And we click it and it's done. So here's a pit tag. And this pit tag allows for our RFID feeders to detect specific individuals as the pit tag has a unique 10 digit code that corresponds to each unique tag and thus each unique bird. 07, 07 00, 00, 00 e, 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 29, 29 AB. A, B. Okay. Okay. Ready? You want to release it slow motion for her? I can do slow motion. Okay. After we've banded as many chickadees as we can, the next step is just to leave the feeder open until we get a lot of visitation. So birds that are coming and actively using the feeder. And so birds are comfortable and when we have up to 100 chickadees visiting one of our feeder sites at a given moment, that's when we actually turn on the RFID feeders. Uh, and we turn these on and we program them into all target mode, which means that any bird with a pit tag, any chickadee with a pit tag that comes and lands on a perch, one of these black perches, allows the feeder to open. It has a mechanism that opens and closes a small door and gives chickadees access to a seed inside. And so this mechanism can be a little scary at first for chickadees. And so we need to, we actually turn on all these feeders and let the birds get used to this opening and closing of the feeders before we move to the next stage of our experiment. And so when we're finally ready and these birds are still visiting, uh, they're habituated to the opening and closing mechanism, uh, that's when we actually begin our uh, memory and learning experiment. And so, there's eight feeders in an array, and we have several hundred birds visiting each location. 
Each one of these are equipped with a circuit board, which has memory. We're allowed to program into this internal memory a specific set of individuals that are visiting the feeder, so a specific set of birds, and those feeders will then only open to those birds that are saved in those memories. And so we can distribute those several hundred birds across these eight different feeders. When these specific birds come to the feeder, every single feeder was opening for them before, and now only the specific feeders assigned to them will open and give them access to seeds. And this is crucial because when a chickadee comes for the first time and has its specific target feeder programmed, the chickadee will come and maybe land on a different feeder that it's normally been rewarded at previously, and it won't open for it, and this chickadee will then uh, fly around the array and sample other feeders until it finds the specific feeder within the eight that opens for it, uh, and then it will extract a seed and fly away. Um, and when it comes back for a second trial, when it comes back to find it again, if it directly flies to that feeder that it learned opens for it, that means that it's a very superior bird and that it's using its memory, its previous experience to find that same rewarding location again. And so how many errors it makes when it's visiting our array each time allows us to measure the speed of learning uh, and measure how well these birds are learning and memorizing these specific locations in the woods. Well, after two years uh, studying memory in chickadees that we mark with uh, P tags, we did indeed find uh, that chickadees that had better spatial memory survived better, and chickadees that did not have very good memory did end up dying. And this is a very exciting result because it's been hypothesized for years, but we were the first, for the first time, we actually were able to show this in the wild by measuring cognition of these birds in wild conditions exactly where they are living. Uh, what we also found, which also supports the same findings, is that adult birds show better memory than juvenile birds, uh, which is interesting. It's what we call the age class comparison. So if we have more juvenile initially and they have a lot of variation many of them are good many of them are bad but then the ones that are not good at memory will die so the birds becoming adults by default will have better memory and we will detect it if we compare different ages and finally we also show that birds don't change their memory performance between years so we found that the birds when we tested them when they were one year old uh, showed the same performance when they were two year olds so suggesting they're not learning between the years and that what we measure is a relevant uh, trait or, or special memory that birds likely use to find their caches. Well, so here it is. So that's uh, the end of uh, one part of our study. Uh, we hope to keep uh, this research project ongoing. We're going to keep tracking these individuals for years to come uh, and are excited to keep solving the chickadee puzzle. If you oh. see these birds with pit tags, please let us know. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. So the bird that we study is locally famous, is known as the cheeseburger bird because that's its normal song and so it sounds like he's saying cheeseburger and so when a male is singing in the spring, which they wouldn't be singing now, but he would say so cheeseburger as he tries to find a mate.